Hey everyone, okay, so today we're gonna be covering our last day of notes. We are talking about erosion and deposition by waves. Waves are extremely powerful because they release a lot of energy every single time they are um, moving and then they crash against our shoreline. And because of that, we have these beautiful structures along our coastline. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so for the very first thing I wanted to cover first was to understand how um, how wind move, how wind creates these waves, okay? So ocean waves are created by wind and they blow across the surface by the water transferring energy. Um, you, um, you can go ahead and click on the um, on this link later, but I have it pulled up over here, okay? And it just kind of shows you the different way that waves move. Um, interesting, If you, I want, what I want you to do is to take a look at this little um, orange dot right here. And if you notice, if you're just following my cursor, you'll notice that the dot is moving up and down in a circular motion. A lot of people think that waves just move forward and back. So they move forward and then they move back. But actually, it's not moving forward and back. It's moving up and down. And so it gives you the illusion that it's moving forward and back. Now, when it is going up and down, why is this significant? Well, it's significant because as it's moving forward and back, it's also moving that sediment, right? So it says right here, it says, in the ocean, the waves move through the water, but the water doesn't move forward. As waves get close to the shore, the water starts to move forward with the wave and it picks up sediment, okay? Remember, sediment is what creates all of those landforms. So that moving water then causes erosion when waves hit the shoreline. Okay, so most, most beach sand comes from rivers that carry eroded sediment to the ocean. Waves weather and erode and then transports or moves that sand and other sediments. Okay, and when it does, it starts to create these beautiful different landforms. Okay, so right now what you're looking at right here is a sea stack. And this sea stack actually used to be connected to the land. Um, and it says big columns of rock that were once connected to the mainland, eventually they crumble, okay? And an example of that is this um, uh, is this cute video that I'm going to show you on the next slide. I'm not going to show you the whole thing, but you can kind of see it on your, on your own time. But it's talking about a sea cliff. So you start with the solid cliff. Eventually, it breaks sea down. Cliff. It gets eroded by the waves. A cave is formed. So you have this little cave. The cave gets hollowed through. If it extends to the other side, an arch is created. There it starts to create something called a sea arch. And eventually the this arch collapses. And it collapses, leaving a stack. And it creates a sea stack. And that's actually how these sea stacks are created. Okay? All right, so for this next one, we're going to talk about it forms from erosion as waves erodes the land along the shore and causes rock to collapse into the sea. A wave cut cliff, this is a new vocabulary for you, and I'm going to explain it to you in, um, in this video right here, okay? Now, I'm actually not going to play the video, but all I want to do is just to kind of show you what it looks like, and I'll describe it here, okay? So hopefully this kind of makes sense. Okay, so what this cliff used to look like is if you are looking at number one, so look at number one. The cliff used to go out and it used to go and look like this, okay, just like a rectangle. Well, if you could imagine, the waves are coming in and eventually it keeps these waves at number two, it keeps coming in and it carves it out, just like it said in that last video, okay? So as it carves it out, first it forms like this little sea cave right here, okay? And only the bottom gets eroded away, but not the top. And as it continues, this will continue to become eroded away, okay? Now, what happens? That eroded material will eventually, it'll fall, fall down and it creates the area here to become wider and wider, okay? Eventually, this can hold all of this material up here and so eventually this whole thing falls down and you end up with something called a wave cut cliff. Okay, and it's called a wave cut cliff because the waves are actually cutting the cliff. And what you end up getting is an area where there is a lot of beach here. Um, and it looks like a basically like a platform. So that's called a wave cut cliff. Okay, 
in here, this is a real life picture of it. And what I want to point out is, do you see like this area right here? It kind of looks like there's sediment that's kind of fallen. Well, if you could imagine all this white area used to not be this far back, it was much further out to the sea, but eventually it ended up getting cut by those waves. And so that's why they call it a wave cut clip. Okay, sea caves. Sea caves are formed just like in that video I had mentioned. The sea caves are formed because it hollows out the bottom. And you have a sea arch. Eventually that cave continues to get eroded away and it can't take it anymore. And so, and therefore it creates this big hole. Okay, the headlands. Headlands is something that I think is really cool because it kind of looks like fingers that are sticking out into the water. Okay, and um, um, the reason why it ends up becoming these like finger looking landforms is because it used to not look like this. This whole thing used to be rock, but it was softer rock or and um, also the tide kept coming in and it kept eroding the, the cliff away. And so therefore you end up getting this finger like structure. You have a lot of these out in California. Um, where it looks like this, very much so. Okay, and then finally a beach. Okay, now a beach is created by deposition, okay? It is created because eventually that water moves out and then it settles, it moves into the shoreline and then it moves back out. Well, when it moves back out, it's much slower. And so therefore it's going to drop that sediment. Okay, so a beach is a form of deposition. Now I'm gonna go back one slide because I wanted to make sure that you guys knew this. Okay, so headlands is erosion, a sea arch, a sea cave, a sea, a wave cut cliff, a sea stack. These are all examples of erosion. So basically a good way to remember this is that all of them start with, most of them start with the word sea. So sea, sea cliff, sea cave, sea stack, um, also a wave cut terrace and a headlands. There are five things that you have to memorize. Okay, um, for the deposition, there is a beach. And then you've got something called longshore drift, which isn't a, and I wanna say this, a longshore drift is not a landform that is created, but it's the uh, longshore drift is something that happens that creates these landforms that are created by deposition. So the easiest way to remember this, okay, first is that longshore drift is when um, as the waves hit that ocean, I mean, hit, oh, excuse me, as the waves hit the, 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 the beach, when it goes, it goes in on an angle, but then it goes out like this and it goes in this zigzag direction. Okay. That's called longshore drift. The easiest way for me to try to explain this to you is maybe if you actually experience this yourself. So, um, I want you guys to think if you've ever been to the beach, if you ever had the fortune of going to the beach and you go there and you're swimming in the ocean and your parents tell you, okay, you can go into the ocean, have fun, but make sure that I can see you, okay? I mean, I, as a parent, I remember always doing that with my kids and I never take my eyes off my children, okay? Um, because I know that this usually happens. How many of you, you're playing in the ocean, you're looking at your parents and then you're jumping over those waves and all of a sudden you look up and you still see your parents, but for some reason they're like further down from where you last saw them, like maybe a little bit all the way down to the right or all the way down to the left, depending upon where you are. Okay, now if you do remember that and you, that has um, happened to you, then what you experience is longshore drift. And the reason why is because all that water goes into the coastline on an angle, but then it goes back out straight back. So it does like this zigzag location um, direction and that's why it appears as if you're drifting. Okay, another one is called a spit. Okay, they call it a barrier spit, which it forms because of longshore drift. And it causes sediment to move down along the beach. So like all of this used to not be here. It used to be further back over here. But because of that longshore drift, it kind of just drags that sediment all the way down. And it creates this kind of like, like it looks like a little hook or a little finger that's like sticking out into the water. That's called a barrier spit. Okay, so like that would be like a little barrier spit, a barrier spit. Now a barrier island looks something like this and it's an island that forms parallel to the shoreline. Again, it's formed by deposition and it's similar to a sandbar, but it is, the island is more permanent. 
Okay, so actually, like up in New York, there is an island called Long Island that is actually a barrier island. And it's something that's more permanent than a sandbar. A sandbar you may have experienced if you walked out and all of a sudden you were able to stand in the water, you're standing on a um, deposit of sand that was created every single time those waves pulled out. That's a sandbar, but that sandbar is not permanent. Okay, barrier islands, on the other hand, those are gonna be more permanent. Okay, so that's all of the landforms. Further down on your sheet of your notes packet, you have this diagram. Keep this handy, see if you can figure it out on your own. D is actually pointing to right here. Okay, and E is pointing to here. Okay, and see if you can kind of figure this out on your own. Um, we'll go over it again together in our live session. So don't worry about that. But if you want to try to guess and then see if you got it right as we're going over it, that would be great. Okay, and that's it.